Hello there. Today we are at the Nanalex Detailing University, uh, the Nanalex Detailing Shop, and it's got another title as well. Yeah. Detailing uh, Center. Detailing Center. Yeah. And we are joined by Florian Kessler, and we have been all around the Nanalex factory facility uh, this morning, and um, I thought it would be nice to usher Florian away from the crowds, the hustle, the bustle, the employees, um, and get to know the man and get to know the, the motivation behind the Nanalex brand. Um, and basically, I suspect it will turn into a slight polemic about the industry, which I'm hoping for, but um, we're going to have to do some centering just to avoid us going to prison again, but I'm sure that'll be all right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, um, Florian, he's about my age, so, you know, a, a good age. And, um, 22. He, 22, exactly. Yeah. Really? Um, and um, we have, well, uh, you grew up slightly in the States as well, so you're German. Mm, but well, yes. I'm, I'm German. I went to... To a high school in the U.S. for some time. So, yes. so yeah. quite a worldly chap. Um, and um, mm. I, from a car point of view, would you call yourself a di hardcore car enthusiast? Mm. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I, I used to be, but not anymore. Gotcha. Yeah. And, and from a detailing point of view, yeah. tell me how you got into detailing. Um, I got into detailing because uh, during the time that I went to a U.S. high school, I, well, I guess I had to, to uh, at least sometimes watch my uh, host sister do detailing after school because she was um, helping out at a detailing place and uh, as an exchange student you're not allowed to drive a car and if you're, mm -hmm. you know, somewhere in a, let's say, relatively small village in Indiana, there's not that much to do. So you watch uh, people detail cars. And the big thing about Nanalex really is it started from nothing. As, as in it started really small and has grown now to the point where the factories, as you will or have or will do see, uh, is vast. It's got, you're up <coughs> to what, uh, do you say 11 employees now? Yep. Um, yep. And uh, a vast product line. How many different products have you got at the moment? Roughly. 27. 27. I think. That's, that's when I asked roughly. <laughs> could, be, could be 28, <laughs> but I think it's 27. You ask a German for a rough approximation. Yeah. 27. <laughs> um, and um, they stretch. And, and the one, you know, obviously there's a focus on ceramic. Yeah, and that sort of technology. Yeah, that's I would call it the core, the core of, yeah. of the market. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, how did you get from you kind of rebellious? I'm going to clean my own car all on my own now, <laughs> to um, to running a big international detailing brand. So, one of my family's friends started a small company specialized in industrial coatings, mm -hmm. um, with a uh, with a chemist and because of my background, they asked me to help them with uh, admin and. Yeah. Would, you, would, you, would you do at university? So, I mean, you're, not, you're not a chemist yourself? Uh, no, I'm not. I have... Uh, you have people for that? Well, yes. I mean, obviously, the, the, the company is uh, part owned by Andreas Neuner, mm -hmm. who's uh, formulating all the products. Um, yeah, but I mean, in, in the beginning, you know, there wasn't really uh, the idea of doing car care. In the beginning, we did... Uh, coatings for tunnels. Uh, really heavy duty coatings. Yeah, yeah. Two, two component coatings. Well, mm -hmm. also clear coats. What made you make that leap into the car size? Um, we had, at some point, we, we had a request for a glass sealant mm -hmm. for um, glass shower cabins. Okay. And because I was, I guess you, at that point, you could call me like an enthusiast car care user, mm -hmm. if you want to. Yeah, yeah, that along works. those lines. I mean, some people call it a weekend so, warrior, but yeah. yeah, and then you know you're trying a lot of things, and at some point I said, well, it works on you know on on shower cabins, what so why would it not work on uh, on uh, automotive glass? Yeah. So um, yeah, and I I tried it and it worked, and um, I was a lot on detailing world at that point. I mean, we're still... We're talking, what, 2008, 2000? No, that would be, two, yeah, 2007. 2007. 2006, 2007 mm -hmm. was when we started it. And then I think yeah, early 2008, so pretty much exactly 10 years ago, that was yeah, like basically That's just that playing was around. Like, yeah. And you just apply it and you see what's going to happen. And then it worked. Yeah, I came up with a name and a logo and a rough idea in um, terms of design? The um, Nanolex, I'm guessing yes. nano is because it's nanotechnology. Yeah, I mean, at least at that point, um, most of it was. Now, 
I mean, yes, we, ha we still have so-called nano sealants that are nanotechnology by definition, but obviously all the cleaning products, the polishes. Yeah, there's, there's no point using yeah. nano. I mean, and the, and the logo itself is, is a lotus flower. By yes, the way. exactly. It's supposed to be a lotus flower. I mean, the idea was there, there's, they exist in two colors, green and, and purple. And I wanted to have something symbolic that shows the customer that this is different. Mm -hmm. And what you were talking about, I mean, we were talking off camera earlier a lot about ceramic coatings. Yeah. Um, and um, what's your opinion of um, the, the market, or should we say the, the various products that are available um, that are or claim to be uh, ceramic based on the market as they stand? I don't really want to make a reference to other brands or products. I but probably think that's a good idea. I can, yeah. yeah. What I can, I mean, I can tell you what the idea behind the product is, and then you'll probably see the difference mm -hmm. uh, or realize the difference. And also, I mean, when I was tr the, let's say the, the specifications that I wanted to have for SA3D was one product, one layer, one hour. Mm -hmm. So that it is, uh, and it needed to be fairly easy to apply mm -hmm. because what I did from the start is more as taking my personal let's say car care needs mm -hmm. uh, and then sort of find a response to right. that yeah. in a chemical way together with uh, with our chemist and we're basically producing what we want to use or yeah I got you well that was so, interesting one thing you were saying is that um, you know, on weekends, he sneaks into the factory and steals some of their own product and uses it <laughs> on his own car. Um, <laughs> and it's like, you know, the bottom of the I cooking mean, tubs, you go with a spoon and just get the last yeah. drains out. But I mean, the whole idea being that everything <laughs> that you produce is something that you would like to yeah. use on your own car. Yeah, I mean, behind every product, there is uh, an idea why we would like to have it. I mean, there's obviously an evolution. You don't, you know, come up with 27 products like like that, you know, and then and it's well, unless all you go to a company and ask them to do that for you, yeah, which yeah. instantly is a service you also offer. Yeah, that's something we would do as well. I mean, so, uh, one thing a lot of people don't necessarily know is Nanolex is a big private label <coughs> um, provider. Obviously, everything's very QT. We can't possibly say who any, any of those yeah. people are, but it is a, a service that you offer yeah. um, from start to finish. So not just. Uh, here are some products, but here we'll develop you some specific products to your requirements. Yep. We'll brand them, we'll label them. And the, uh, what was really interesting was talking with the, uh, about the shipping side um, and about yep. the, the licensing side. You know, these guys are qualified to ship dangerous goods by air and all sorts of other bits by and bobs. By boat, boats too. Yeah, road, train, ferry, <laughs> everything. And to the, I mean, to the UK, you have to keep in mind everything that goes into the UK, it's usually ferry or a tunnel, and in both cases, you have to. You have to be quite careful. Yes. Yeah. Well, you, oh, hell, you can't even take a car with an LPG on, on the tunnel. Yep. Um, yep. So it's quite a serious consideration. Or go to Wagstock with a van full of, you know. And I have to say that um, your factory was the most pedantically organised. It was very efficient. It was very sensible, very clean, very, and everybody was. It, it was disciplined. Um, but we do, it was definitely organized. I mean, to the point where when I left him alone, he would go up and down the shelves, just twisting bottles like this, which is fine if you've got a little tiny yeah. shop, but this is a warehouse where nobody else is going to see them. And he still spent 25 <laughs> minutes twisting them all around yeah, like this. It's a bit of, of a problem. Yeah, yeah, no, it was, it was pretty special behavior. But, but at the same time, it was, it was great mm -hmm. um, to see that kind of you know, attention to detail. And this is the thing is that we were talking about mm. how detailing companies, uh, some are in it for the money, some are in it purely for the passion. And you can tell the ones with a passion because you know the products might be good if they can afford to develop them properly. Um, but from the business point of view, it doesn't necessarily rock and roll. And then you've got others who do exceptionally well at business. Yeah. Um, but then when we talk to them, you know, what's your favourite car? And they look at me blankly as if you know I need to kind of give them some guide on it. And you know, I have had replies such as a Ferrari. Well, that's not a dream car. If you just say a Ferrari, it's got to be a specific model for me. It'd be a yeah. 288 GTO. Yeah, and that would be. Right. So it, it's, it's about the level yeah. of enthusiasm, I think. It's actually, I, I figured out the, the, the answer to the dream car question. So if you ask me again, I'll, oh, I, right. I don't know how I can. <laughs> Florian, what's, what's, your, what's your dream car? Uh, E46 M3 CSL. Okay, so as you can see, Florian's not a massive car enthusiast, <laughs> but he is into the detail side. <laughs> but um, one thing I want to talk about is, is, sorry, he gets the giggles like this, is, is when he thinks about an E46 BMW. Um, the <laughs> no, so, well. Yes and no. <laughs> yes and no. no the, you know, the, the, the funny thing is that actually the detailing aspect had a mm -hmm. bigger impact on a Golf Mark 
three mm -hmm. the heavy than one. it would have on that car because in perspective, you know, every time you clean the car and you have that result, you know, the car feels better. It feels like it's well, it's yeah, it still feels you, like you, a you know what I mean? Also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's still it is, but you know, it feels better. Mm -hmm. um, but so we're talking about the level of enthusiasm, mm -hmm. stuff like that. But one thing is um, with ceramics. Can you describe briefly, without giving yeah. away any of your trade secrets, yeah. how a ceramic coating or, or, or a ceramic product is constructed? You were saying there are two components essentially to it. Right. There is, I mean, there is, let's say, a group of raw materials where you have two different kinds, an organic one and an anorganic one. Mm -hmm. um, they both have different features um, in terms of, you know, what most people are looking at is hydrophobicity, so, you know, mm -hmm. all the the water beading and then you have um, also the density of the product which basically defines uh, resistance against mechanical abrasion and chemical impact mm -hmm. and then the rest of it would be well additives and solvents to you know to formulate it in a way where it's easy to apply you know where it has the features that you need mm -hmm. in certain I mean we have to make it work in all the environments, but you can obviously adapt it. If you, let's say you have a customer that would say, I do, I don't know, a thousand cars in the desert, you know, mm -hmm. you would probably want to give them a bit of a different... Different product from somebody who works Formulation, yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. No, so the raw materials are usually ceramic precursors. Okay. So if you would want to have a coating on your car that would be like ceramic or glass, mm -hmm. you would have to heat it up to at least 400 degrees Celsius after application. Okay. So now, I'm not a, a genius or anything, yeah, but, but I the car would melt. Yes. I was about to say, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, not the whole car would melt, but, but a lot of crucial, crucial important things yeah, would, would get would, upset. Yeah. yeah. So like passengers, for example. Yeah. If yeah. You, I mean, if you would be smart enough to sit in there when you heat it up, then yeah, it would be probably, a problem. Probably yeah. give it a whirl, yeah. be a giggle, see what happens, test the air cold. <laughs> so, so what you're saying is that from a, from a chemistry point of view, yeah. um, it would be technically impossible to have a glass-like ceramic, true ceramic coating on a vehicle without cooking the vehicle post-application. Yeah. yeah. This is why I left out the whole ceramic and glass thing, because I think it's misleading. You're basically, you know, we would, if we would use that term, you know, you would give people the idea that, you know, you can't scratch the car, which... You can. I mean, the, the uh, hardness always depends on what you apply it to. So if you apply a coating, whatever it is, to a very hard surface, then the result of a test be will be, yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. Well, it's interesting you brought that up. We actually had the same conversation with uh, Craig Hall, in fact, saying that this, yeah. these people think this coating is, say, a 9H. Yeah. Um, well, that's all well and good, but it depends. He, the way that he was expressing it was that our coating adds an extra 2H yeah. uh, or 3H that makes to, sense, to yeah. the existing coating yeah. that's there. And so yeah. if you're on a, on a great car like a, like a Subaru, which has got soft paint, yeah. it might only get up to 5H. Yeah. Um, but if you put it on, you know, something... For, a metal plate. Like uh, they do in 9H yeah, test or, or, or a ceramic, a ceramic clear coat, like a Mercedes yeah. or something like yeah. that. Um, then that might get you up to, to, to 9H because it started at yep. 7H in the first place. I mean, think of it that way. Plastic trim is also technically like paint, but it's much softer. Mm -hmm. And then no one claims that it makes plastic trim 9H. No, that's very true. In fact, yeah. a lot of the trim seems they seem to be around three to five, is, is from what I've seen, if that. Um, but again, you see this. There's that look. I've been with Florian long enough now to know the, the eyebrow code. It's like Morse code, and the glass is often squeezing nose. That's that's pretty serious. Um, but to change the topic again, we've got this hardness meter. Now, this is something we've mentioned repeatedly. Yeah. Um, and the pencil lead scale. This is a pencil lead scale hardness thingamajig. Yep. What would you describe it as in a scientific term rather than thing? It's really this heavy. This is a pencil hardness. It's one kilo. It's I one pretty much. Okay, so not really heavy. It has to. It has to. Than I mean. Looks. Oh, it has to be from a from point of view of how much force yeah, it puts onto a yeah, surface. Yeah. Okay, so um, what we'll do, we'll, we'll, we'll intersect this with some, some close-up stuff, um, yeah. but it's much heavier than it looks. I'm, I'm not just being weak. Um, and the idea is that, I imagine, when you say pencil lead, it literally is a pencil, pencil. lead. Um, and these ones, this particular instrument is made by somebody called BYK. Yeah, because it's all certified to, you know, be... So, so as yeah. a result, yeah, so you can't just randomly pick up a pencil from a stationer's and, and test it necessarily. You could, but then, I mean, the... 
I guess the, te the test results would be considered tainted, so... Yeah, well, I've just noticed the pencils here are Derwent, which I believe is an English company. Yeah, that's... Yeah, yeah, yeah I think so. Um, and <laughs> tell me how to use it, because I have no clue. In fact, let's not use this. Well, basically, I mean, here we to go. do this the whole setup. So this right. is a... So, I mean, at the end, of, you have this, you know, this uh, small the spirit scale gauge, yeah. Shows, yeah. Right, so you're just opening up the... Uh, was expecting me just to say, oh, here's a pencil there, partner, and now I've asked right. to use I mean, it. you have to prep the, the panel and everything, but at mm -hmm. the end, I mean, what happens is you have to adjust it in a way where... Right. In a way where the... So, I mean, theoretically, we could test the hardness of your tape. Yeah, 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 if you want it's to. It's quite destructive testing, of course. So it's, <laughs> um, you have to... Well, there's the whole sharpening and everything before that, but yeah. in the end, you know, you basically you're putting this on the surface, and then you, you know, you hold it like this, mm -hmm. and you push it forward. That's it, and then you check if it's scratched. Like that. Yeah. That's Am I scratching your table? I don't know. We'll see. Mm, well, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you have. Okay, yeah. so the table is ta the table. Is table is definitely is not for a. Not for a. <laughs> 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 but the answer is it's a proper thing yeah. that you can test, and pe if you wear a white coat and do it repeatedly, yeah. then, then it would be kind of scientifically verifiable. Yeah. Um, and, and that's, you know, it's just interesting that there is actually a test to do that. It'd be fascinating to get some, some paint, test the hardness, put a coating we, on it. We have test panels here if you want to. Well, why don't we do that? I'll tell you what, we're going to take But I have to check if, if they are actually ready to. Ready to do it. Well, I'll tell you what, we'll take a quick pause here and we'll reconvene when we've got something to play with. So we're back now and uh, we've got this test panel that has been used a couple of years ago and various leading brands of uh, ceramic coating manufacturers were put on here, including Nanolex's own um, uh, 3D product. Um, and the uh, one thing with yourselves you're saying is that multiple layers were put on. So some of these up to five layers were put on as per instructions. But you've got this idea that it's got to be one product, i.e. Yes. not two different types of ceramic to be layered on top of each other. One layer, well, right. one hour, and ergo one, one layer because in terms of curing terms, yeah. it would be impossible to put a second and, and let that cure as well. And there can technically only be one layer of SI3D because you either, yeah. well, once the layer was formed, it will not let itself attach again in... I see what you mean, so, so you different, yes. Yeah, so it will like repel having, itself. It's like having two bits of Velcro that are the yeah. wrong types of Velcro, so yeah, the exactly. same ones. Yeah. Um, the um, interesting thing though, we've got all the kit here, we've got all the test panels, we've done all sorts of bits and bobs over in the, in the past and the rest of it, and then Florian drops a bombshell, which is kind <laughs> of, what, what the hell's the point of all these tests? How often do you rub a pencil against your car? And it's kind of got a point. And he was explaining that the testing procedure for that you were using to make a product practical, not something that necessarily in a lab ticks all boxes, but practical in the real world. Yeah. Uh, well, how did, how did tell the guys how you, um, I was going to say guys and girls, but to be honest, it's mostly guys who watch this, <laughs> um, how uh, the guys and girls, um, uh, you tested your products in, 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 the kind of in the real world? Yeah, we, we tested in the real world. So automatic car wash, um, I mean, we obviously test all the chemicals that we produce. Mm -hmm. Um, we test other chemicals that are known to be harsh. Mm -hmm. um, we have a cooperation with a automatic car wash manufacturer where we can actually put the coatings on to their black company cars, which are washed three times a day. Okay. So, and we usually have at least, well, then 100 test washes within a month. Wow. So we can see, you know, what happens. But still, at the end of the day, you know, every automatic car wash manufacturer designs it differently. In every geographical region, it will be different. Um, first of all, in terms of the contamination and then also in the type of cleaning products that are being used. Mm -hmm. So, so we're, you're not going to stand up and say that these resist all automatic no, car washes. No, no, no But no. you can at least say that... Um, with a particular, I imagine, quite popular brand of automatic car wash, we have done some extensive yeah, yeah, testing yeah. with it. I mean, there's also lab testing, but then the same as with the 9H pencil test, the question is, how can you transfer that to the real life? Yeah, so driving I mean, through a thorn bush, for yeah. example, which I've done more than once, yeah, strangely yeah, enough, yeah. Um, is uh, you know, how, how hard, so to speak, are thorns when they come in? Do you know? 
I have no idea. I, I think it changes within well, their lifetime because when they're green, I think they're softer than when they're... they harden and they go out. Yeah, yeah. No, I was watching a really interesting nature. Anyway, never mind. Um, <laughs> <laughs> secret life of the thorn bush. Um, but this is, this is the point, is that is creating products for the real world, not products yeah. that you can uh, uh, put on some sort of label in terms of hardness or whatever it might be, um, for the sake of essentially marketing. And it was interesting, yeah. ag again, talking um, with CarPro, it was exactly the point. They don't say we have a nine edge coating. They have, a, say, a coating that can yeah. add to a Because it just doesn't. It doesn't make sense. And equally, if you, you go know, too hard, one point you were saying is that cars, when they get hot and cold, they expand and contract. If the coating yeah, was really hard, it would be brittle. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it would fall apart. And again, that was a point that Jason yeah. Rose, in fact, of Rupes, picked up and he said that, you know, the paint on your car um, is porous. Um, and it is a, it's a flexible item. Well, again, there was a kind of a, a debate on that. It, it is flexible, yes. Yeah. yes, yes. Uh, but the analogy he was using was a human skin on that side of things, which are, is not kind of plasticized, so it's going to be slightly different. Um, but Florin's making a, a, a face of skepticism, <laughs> I think, it would be the answer there. I mean, I, I, I don't know what the context is. So no, no, absolutely, absolutely. Well, it's, no, it's all interesting, interesting stuff. Um, and so from your point of view, the point of SI3D is to be a practical thing that is easy to apply, provides protection from things that really exist. Yep. Um, and um, that's, and I imagine at a price point that is fair, yeah. you know, make, to the make your life easier where, you know, the result is not, you know, unachievable for, yep. let's say, someone who wants to, to do it. You know, there's, you know, we have videos, we have written manuals, you know, you can call mm -hmm. and ask if you have a, yes, if you have a. There's a 24 hour helpline. <laughs> There's a 24-hour emergency line if you have like a, <laughs> a, a chemical emergency. There's not a 24-hour help. Line. Well, there's there is help if you have a chemical emergency. There's help if you need a chemical. That noise you if made you, there was magical. Yeah. So again, what we'll do is put um, Florian's personal mobile number underneath. Call it any time, day or night. <laughs> You'll love it. Um, no, we won't. Hmm. Yes, we. Yeah. Uh, never mind. But yeah, no. But the point being is, it's whether you're saying with the university side to it so people you call would actually know what you're talking about so if in an emergency yeah. say um you had accidentally got very drunk yeah. and you got some si3d and you thought i'll tell you what as a dare i'm going to drink this yeah well then you're not going to call anymore you're not going to call anymore <laughs> 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 okay. that's going to be that's going to be game <laughs> over yeah so you pick up the phone yeah. sorry there's nothing we can yeah, do yeah i don't think you will just be say able goodbye to, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i don't think not even i yeah i don't think that that would be possible Oh, I'm not. I'm not sure. We never know. We don't. <laughs> we don't want to. We don't want that. to know. Yeah. yeah. Suddenly the comment ends very quickly. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we have been cracking ourselves up each day. I mean, not as that, that. That could be. Uh, we have been made e each other laugh quite a lot. Uh, yeah. That has to be said. But um, because that's the whole point of it. It is absolutely. Yeah. Partly. And the um, other thing is, is where do you think the industry is going? Where, what do you think is going to be, forget the ceramic side for now, yeah. because we've talked a lot about that. Yeah. Um, in terms of uh, the market as a whole, what do you think will be some exciting developments? Well, it will need to become greener in terms of more sustainable in a chemical mm -hmm. way. I, I'm pretty sure about that. I mean, we've seen that over the last years with REACH. Mm -hmm. um, Reaches CLP, the new, the new yeah. regulations uh, with the Regul little triangles. Yeah. Regulations, car manufacturers banning certain chemicals. Mm -hmm. So, um, and also uh, based on the scarcity of uh, certain raw materials, um, I think there will be a bit of a of a change. And also um because of the kinds of uh, surfaces you have to deal with because mm -hmm. the paint is changing all the time mm -hmm. so you sort of ha you, you have to keep an eye on the paint manufacturing industry at the same time especially on the interior of the car a lot of things are changing you have a lot more screens yes you know thinking of like a new mercedes s-class you basically just it's one big screen more or less yeah yeah, yeah. so um and it needs to be compatible or you have these uh, recycled materials inside a BMW or an open porous type of wood mm -hmm. in your center console, so things like that. So there's a lot of development. Do you, with, with paint companies, do you yeah. communicate with them directly or do you just have to wait for it no, to come No, they out? wouldn't tell you anything, which is too, way too small for that. Oh, that's very annoying. You have to, and you have to, you, you, you basically have to, to work. With, and it changes from, you know, if you look at, uh, the German car manufacturers, and you, you, you know, you have three, well, same manufacturer, three 
black cars and every paint will be different. Yeah, well, hell, even, even between the same, same yeah, make and models, yeah, the yeah, paint feels yeah, different. Yeah. Um, and in terms of uh, your kind of R&D side, mm. I, I sense from spending some time with Florent, oh, this table wobbles, yes. um, from spending some time with Florent that um, he's, 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 he's driven, it's very much kind of your vision, so to speak, but at the same time, you've got networks of approved detailers all around the place. Right, yeah. Um, is there a, a strong two-way communication? Yeah, I mean, uh, Pete, who is sitting over there, I don't know if you want to... I thought it was your security guard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, he's, he, we're, well, we have a very close uh, relationship, professional relationship, <laughs> um, with, with all the, the detailers. Um, because that's something, you know, when, when, when I got into the whole subject, I mean, I was obviously taught a few things and I saw a few things, but mm -hmm. at the end of the day, what, you, what I realized, I can only speak for myself, what I realized is that, um, you know, it's mostly learning by doing. Yeah. But if you had someone who can actually... Accelerate that process. Right? Yeah, then that narrow. would help. Yeah. Because, I mean, even after washing, I don't know how many cars, polishing, well, not that many cars, mm -hmm. um, and still, you know, work constantly working with the subject, you know, every time you see something new. Yeah. Whether it's, you know, like just the, the sequence of how you do things or the amount of product or the sequence of product, you know, to make it more efficient and all that, you know, it, and it most of it is, is you know, once you know it, it, it appears easy. to be yeah. common sense, but it's not. So... Well, it's, it's, I mean, it's like just a simple thing of using a wash mat. Is yeah. a lot of people yeah. are still using sponges because yeah. that's what you do, isn't it? Yeah. And then um, when you now you started them, a big debate. Yeah. Well, well yeah. It's, like, it's not that big a debate. Not with me, but in general. No, yeah. no, no. We'll leave them to it. That's fine. They okay. can't use the keyboard. Um, <laughs> is, is you know people uh, are used to using that, but when you explain why you don't use a sponge, they're like, oh yeah, that makes sense, and then yeah. they, they actually do it, yeah. which is quite good. I mean, I'm I'm always you know telling people you know you start with the wheels and then you go from bottom up. Mm -hmm. But well, yeah, you say that's you see that's a contentious point in its own. Because <laughs> um, again, I know you're taking the piss there because actually you go from the top down, by the way. Yeah. Um, but the um, there are arguments. I mean, Alan Medcroft, who's a yeah. well, very highly respected detailer in terms of snow foaming, yeah. um, does it in a different direction. This is just the pre-wash style, um, and comes up with some very logical reasons for it. And to be honest, um, there are lots of people who looked at that, including myself, and thought, well, that's that makes absolute sense. In fact, I mean, you can. I mean, I'm I'm a big fan of water beading and foam mm -hmm. i guess like everyone else yeah but you should keep in mind that it's actually pointless both <laughs> is <laughs> Be beading is pointless my god and i imagine the point you're, what you're the point you're, you're making is that um things like raindrops and stuff have a speck of dust in them when the water i mean you, makes you, it yeah i think you yeah i think you 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 know you you have to look at it from a you know an aspect where you have passion and mm -hmm. this you know, it's sort of your the thing you like doing. You're making color shiny, yeah. Yeah, and it's you know, like you know, upgrading your your engine, remapping it. You mm -hmm. know, where you definitely don't really. Oh, I, I, I would again, if yeah. you talk to anybody with a turbo diesel and a remap, that's yeah. A, it does make a huge <laughs> so, I mean, from from a practical point of view, both mm -hmm. doesn't help. Gotcha. Right, but you want to have it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I want to have it. As well, yes. you know, so it's not that, you know, it's just... So you're, what you're saying really is, is beading and hydrophobicity is completely pointless from a technical point of view, but from a human point of view, yeah, it's you, entirely understandable. Yeah, of course. I mean, if my yeah. car doesn't beat up, I'm just... Yeah, you get quite upset. You have to do something about it. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. you have people for that, right? No, 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 I, I do that myself. Oh, well, that's yeah. good. Yeah. I, I don't think that... Yeah, no. Well, no, I, I'm the only person who, who's washing my company car, really. Is that because nobody else wants to? Or? Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm, I'm being unfair, though. The company car in question is a BMW 340i Touring. Uh, it's a very smart yeah. car. And the ridiculous thing over here is that petrol cars and fast petrol cars are the cheapest to tax, insure, and lease, which is just upsetting. In most. In most circumstances. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Asterisks. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, no, that's good. Well, what I'd like to do now um, is discuss um, what new products you have in the pipeline. I right. know you've been quite secretive about them for various obvious um, reasons. Yeah, I mean, we've, we have products that, you know, then, well, they're, they're just being copied. 
you know, we've had it before. Mm -hmm. We, you know. No, it's I about your I, new I, products. Not about, oh, oh, the reason you don't want to talk yeah, about that, it is that's the reason I, that, that at some point I said, okay, I'm just not going to talk about it anymore. Because we had one uh, case where I spoke about a product, I think six weeks before we eventually introduced it. Yeah. And then one of our uh, competitors actually uh, came up just <laughs> as quickly with something <laughs> and basically... You know, just because of me saying, well, this is, it was microfiber wash, right? which is one of our best selling Yeah, we products. touched on that in the factory, we yeah. took it off and, and had a snack. So, and I mentioned that and it was instantly... One came out from a competitive yeah. product. So, so that's the sort of thing that could make you very paranoid. I'm, I'm just going to... No, I'm, I'm, I'm not paranoid about it. I no. mean, it's just, you know, you recognize it, you realize it. No, there's no one there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, you, you recognize it, you realize it, and then you just don't repeat that mistake. Yeah. Or it could have just been a coincidence. So, I mean, yeah. the, the, what, we're, what we've been focusing on lately was the, well, let's say more professional detergents in terms okay. of professional pre-wash, professional wheel cleaner, both concentrated. Mm -hmm. um, so there will most likely be two more products targeted towards professional. The professional market, yeah. Um, they're not going to be uh, a pre-wash and they're not going to be a wheel cleaner. Okay. Well, <laughs> but that, it's well, something... That, that makes it quite clear. So that's fine. Anybody who's still no, concentrating it, at this point will gonna, know exactly what he's talking about. No, no. It's going to be it's gonna be concentrated, but it's, uh, it's going to be for different... And we haven't tested it to the full extent, so maybe it might not even be introduced. Gotcha. So... Um, well, that brings on to a nice slide. Where do you see your market in terms of, you know, so there are some products out there, some manufacturers that yeah. target mass market. They yeah. target the man at home or the woman at home no, who, we, who does their car every Sunday or every other Sunday um, who, who might know something about two buckets. And then there are companies out there that try to target very much the uh, consumer side, but they do so by claiming we're a professional product um, and therefore everything's... When somebody who buys it who has all of three seconds <coughs> experience says, oh, I'm a professional. And I was saying this when you had a couple of professional products, highly concentrated, that will appeal so much to people who are like, oh, I yeah. want the most powerful option possible um, to the point where you end up seeing people clean their car with brake cleaner. Um, yeah. So yeah. Um, do you envisage yourself as a manufacturer of products mostly for professional, mostly consumer or? No, I would say for both. I want the products you know, to be as democratic Flexible, versatile oh, yeah. I see. yeah yeah okay yeah no, as as possible so i mean we have a lot of professionals using it we have a lot of end consumers using it um it actually very much depends on the geographical area mm -hmm. oh, you know where a, yeah, yeah where in some countries well you were saying south america is, is a huge market for you yeah it becomes a, an even bigger market at the moment yeah um, where it's actually, well, but even within South America, you have, depending on the country, it can be very different. Yes. You know, for example, in Mexico, it's almost only service, mm -hmm. where in a country like Argentina, yes. we, the majority will be end consumers that like to take care of their car, mm -hmm. which is more or less what we see uh, in let's say Central Europe and the UK, I would say it's 50-50 in most of the countries. Yeah. But then, for example, in Poland, it's more professionals at the moment, but there's a growing number of end customers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it, it really, it depends. But if you, I mean, well, most professional detailers started as, let's say, hobby detailers, enthusiasts, however mm -hmm. you want to call it, and then sort of, you know, with experience, they, 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 they graduate. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, where's the line? You know, where do you have an yeah. end consumer, an enthusiast and a professional a detailer where, yeah. you know, I've seen detailers that, you know, know less than a good amateur. Yeah. yeah. So there is I don't draw that line. I've never drawn that line because, I mean, the only reference I had in the beginning, at least, was myself. Where you know I was definitely not a professional, mm -hmm. um, but I like doing it, and I had an idea of how a product would be like, into 
or how you know, wanted it how to be. I would yeah. like it to be exactly how and I that motivated the, the stimulated yeah the, the so design. and that yeah. that's the uh, you know every product has an idea behind it you know no matter you know what you're gonna put in front of me yeah. from the whole line I well, can tell you this was the idea and this is it was a problem solver yeah it was, yeah, it was something exactly, that needed yeah. fixing yeah yeah and absolutely. yeah I mean uh, the well our um, supply was basically created by by our own demand mm -hmm. if you want to I see what you mean talking that well I'm just I'm just looking around here I was going to put yeah. your thing to the test here yeah we've got various products on here I mean some yeah. are very obvious uh, if I asked you why do you need an insect remover then, right. then it's going to be a short yeah. answer do you want to grab some X yeah now um, EX this is uh, describe what EX is a degreaser it's a degreaser yeah <laughs> why did you call it EX <laughs> um, because ex uh, x means gone usually. So oh, I see. Well, usually yeah, that would that sometimes pretty much. About, yeah, yeah, this is pretty much the only product that has a let's say a bit of a a story behind it. Or? No, well, a bit of a, a name that's not that straightforward. You yes. know, usually interior cleaner is interior cleaner, glass cleaner is glass cleaner, and so yeah. On. No, all the others so I can see it, but the, x is quite an odd name. Yeah, so. because the 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 problem with this, and this is the, the well, the story behind the name is. <laughs> that um, Did you squat we, used to, yeah. we used to have a paint cleaner and the glass cleaner, which were both the same as they were both used or supposed to be used as a degreaser. Mm -hmm. But then I didn't want to call the product a degreaser because depending on where you are and in what context, that's so misleading. You, you, you didn't want half, half the people so knowing what it is so and the it other half the people knowing what it is. So you decided yeah. to do something that nobody yeah. knows what it yeah. is. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's very democratically yeah. Yeah. thought of that. And short name. That's very short. You know, when you yeah, when you when you say it, yeah, with just X. Yeah. it didn't even increase the size of the font. Just still had yeah, X at uh, the bottom there, which I thought was hilarious. That was a um, bit of. Um, was that a cock up? Or was that intentional? No, that was unintentional. Unintentional. No. <laughs> 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 I, I admit it. No, it's just. So I just love the smell of this. What's the active solvent? Uh, sorry, without there's a couple in, of them. There's a couple of. I mean, the solvents, the so. idea behind it is, you know, it basically it needs to remove. My Everything isn't that good. It says do not sniff. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it should also be in uh, English. Um, yes. And this was the other thing when we were walking around the factory yeah. as well, is that we had all the um, shelves were arranged with the same products on, but with different language labels. And yeah. Stuff. Again, because we have to. Pedantic. Well, yeah. I, no, I, no, I, no. no. It's, it's forced upon us. Yeah. By the fact that nobody speaks different languages. Or by law. No, by, by, by law. By law. So I've got a final question for you, Florian. Yeah. If you were on a desert island and you're only allowed to take... <laughs> One, well, with your car, obviously, yeah. um, and not necessarily does it, could be quite temperate, yeah. um, with uh, one product mm. um, of, of, I imagine it's going to be a Nanolex product, so let's just call yeah. it one Nanolex product, what would that be? Uh, pure shampoo. And why would that be? Mm, because it's the best way to maintain the car, whether you have a coating on it or not, and it just it makes sure that you have as little, well, you have very good cleaning power, as little scratches so as it's possible about, it's about the lubricity of the shampoo lubricity yes That's we, we were we were we were talking about how it works because the feeling is <laughs> the um, pure shampoo makes a really nice feeling smooth feeling when you're yep. in your car and you're saying that um you you like it because it's when you get to really touch your car but it kind of leaves something because it, 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 yeah. it kind of moisturizes you call it refattening or something yeah like that? yeah it, it, it's in actually. german there's the the term is uh, rückfettend mm -hmm. i'm not sure if there is have a you just stuck two words together and made one long word yeah. Yeah, 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 they do that here, I yeah. see. All the time. Just full sentences without spaces. Um, yeah. But the, um, the, I mean, it has to be pointed out, pure shampoo doesn't leave anything behind. It's not wash right. wax. No, 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 no. But it's a lubricity yeah. while you're using it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and that would be your product. And of course, the benefit on Desert Island, you could wash yourself as well as your car with it. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. Because yeah. here I've noticed the hand soaps Hair, at skin, all the places. Yeah, yeah. 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 It does you the whole shebang. I mean, I'm not recommending to use it. I mean, you could use it as a, yeah, yeah, yeah I know. I'm okay. Um, <laughs> no, because there's obviously no certification for like a cosmetic for human use. use, but yeah. yeah. But no, it's, it would work. Yes. Yeah, no, that's cool. Very high quality ingredients that you would find in also very expensive cosmetics for, oh, for human humans. beings. Yeah. Crikey. Yeah. Crikey. There's, a, there's a lot of overlap, actually. So. Yeah, we were saying what, about 80% is the same as, as, yep. a, as a normal shampoo. So 80% yeah. of a car shampoo. Of a very good normal shampoo. Of a very good normal <laughs> shampoo um, yeah. would be that. And to be yeah. honest, I, th I think people would kind of get that I suppose because I mean again it's a comparison with things like people using dish soap on their car yeah and, I mean that's just that's just wrong yeah for, I mean for various reasons. it cleans very well but mm. it's also 
it has other issues with it. Well, yeah. well yeah. just out of interest, what, what are the I issues? Mean, they're usually decreasing quite strongly, mm -hmm. which is exactly the opposite of refattening. Thus, <laughs> thus basically. The, the and it's just, it's just stripping everything. So there's, yeah, you know, the where, is down and it can take yeah. stuff off. So you can, yeah. you can use pure shampoo on a coated uh, yeah, car you can use with, it. with wax and it yeah. won't take the wax off. It won't take anything off. Apart Nothing. From, will it take the dirt off? Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Just checking. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, <laughs> it has been a very long day here because we've been moving across sites. We've been running around. Uh, Florian obviously runs a big company, and so he's um, regularly being called by very important people um, and um, <laughs> answering calls and stuff like that. So um, we're called. now technically. Huh? <laughs> my mom called. Yeah, that's true. And my mom called you too. It's weird. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Happens all the time. <laughs> yeah, that's what I heard. Um, but anyway, um, so we're all fading here and it's very late and we're off to uh, another city in Germany yeah. um, that is a good sort of three, four hours away. So we are going to hit the road. In the meantime, thank you very much, sure. Florence. Thank it's you very much for coming over. Oh, well, it's been a pleasure. I appreciate pleasure. it. Um, no, it's been a big risk. <laughs> the insurance was crippling, as to be said. Yeah. Um, but um, I didn't even mention Florian. Um, but uh, thank you. And um, thank you will, for coming. Oh well, we will. Um, I'm sure be doing some articles, and magazines as well. So uh, watchers of the Car Care Adventures, uh, we will probably be publishing some interviews and bits and bobs on Nanolex in future issues. So make sure you get yours if you can. Um, meantime, we will see you soon. Thank you very much for watching.